So I'm back in QGIS. Uh, we just finished importing uh, the spatial data. So we use QGIS to get it into PostGIS. So this layer is actually pointing to the one that's in my uh, database and it is spatial there. So we're not looking at the file on disk anymore. But there was also some other data about uh, inspections in that uh, for these restaurants. And so eventually I'm going to be kind of curious about, you know, which have had a high hazard rating. So we can take a look at the data that we want to import uh, in that. So we already imported the restaurants and there was a type file that helped that out. Here, this is the raw data. There's an ID column tracking number that we can link back to the restaurant. Uh, the date the inspection occurred, the type of inspection it was, routine and the follow-up uh, in case there were problems from before, then a really big, depending, uh, I guess there's like two counts, a critical count or a non-critical count. And then there's a comment and the comment has like kind of all the infractions they found when they did the inspection. And then there's a rating of uh, low, moderate, and high. So we can, if we go to the end of this, we see there's a moderate, there's a moderate, there's a low, we keep scrolling down. Here's a high and that. And so the thing is there is no real spatial data in here, uh, but it's like, Extra attribute information is like a one to many, like a restaurant can have many inspections on lots of different dates and that sort of thing. Um, and so the thing is, can we use some of the techniques we used earlier, one being QGS and the database manager to even bring in non-spatial data? And the answer to that is yes. Now, one file that's actually going to help out following the GeoCSV format is that uh, the, the technology under the hood that brings the data in actually will look for this file. And if it's there, you know, respect the fact that you said, hey, the first column of data is an integer followed by a string, followed by a date, followed by a string, another integer, which are the critical, non critical counts, and then the rating, low, moderate, high at the end. Now, that's what they say, right? Let's find out what happens. So I can open up the database manager. I'm going to make sure that I expand PostGIS, expand Gamma, my connection, and make sure I click on the schema. Right? And to do that, uh, and I can see that it sees the uh, tables I loaded earlier uh, via PGMIN4 and also base. It also sees the restaurants that I did in the last video. So what I want to do, actually, is I want to get in here and import a layer, just like last time. Um, but this time I'm going to go and search for it on disk. So I can see the file here. It's this restaurant's inspection reports in UTF format versus ASCII. And that's the one I want, CSV. I'm gonna go okay. I actually don't want the UTF part on the table. Just restaurant inspection reports is fine. Uh, it's going into the correct schema, GST7132. There is a, the primary key is the ID column, but there is no geometry. I'm hoping it figures that out. That, hey, this, this field doesn't actually have geometry on it. Uh, and convert field names to lowercase. So if there are any uppercase or mixed case field names, put them in lowercase. It's just something I like to do. Might want to add a comment to the table. Uh, and so we just can call it. Restaurant inspection and reports. And, you know, we'll call it low, moderate, and high ratings. And with counts, we'll see. So there are some, so if someone was searching the database for data, would this work for me? It might uh, help them with the discovery process. So that's about all I, I can do right now. And I got to hope that the importer looks at that file and figures out the data types in that. Now this might take a few seconds to actually run in that. If it's having a good or bad day, we'll see. Oh, not too bad. Some of the comments are over a 1,500 characters long. So all the infractions that they found. So uh, some of them can be quite lengthy in that. I'll go okay. Uh, 
I'm actually going to go over to PGM at four. I'm kind of, I'm going to refresh this just in case. So there's inspection reports, uh, restaurants. I'm going to look at the columns that came in. Now, one way to check is you can, like I can uh, right click on this and go properties and see, and then definition to see what it picked. It did pick a date data type that feels to me like it found that type file. Or the easiest thing to do is right uh, right click on it. Make sure I'm on it. Yeah, right click, view data. Just grab the first hundred rows, and that that shouldn't take too long to come over. And then we can just check. Okay, ID is the PK. Pick that up, and it's a number. Character varying for the tracking number, correct. Date for the inspection date, that's correct. Character varying for the type, whether it's follow up or routine, it's like a little domain. Critical counts. Critical and non-critical, they're numbers. That's good uh, in case you want to uh, sum things up or average them. Character varying for the comment. And then way at the end, there should be one more, the rating. <laughs> okay. Also character varying. So it looks like it picked up that type file and the data made it into the database. So I'm quite happy about that. There. And so all we want to show in this video is that could you use those same techniques to bring spatial data into the database we also bring in non-spatial data and we're able to do that and so you've seen a bunch of ways you can use pgmin4 sometimes you can use base to do a copy paste you can use qgis to get it in it's always good to know a few ways to get the data in uh, so that you can uh, get your data all in one place and then start your analysis but this concludes this video